Hello everybody, my name is Man Muhammad, and you guys think that being a Sonic fan is hard when they go through mediocrity or when they sell out? Amateurs, try being a Whippy Kid fan. We get new books every year that get slightly worse through each time, and get bad to disappointing movies. Yeah, I know what true despair feels like. I like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Could you tell? As someone who owns almost all the Wimpy Kid books, watch all the movies, and even has the behind-the-scenes books, I can tell you that the quality has started to decrease in recent time. But that is an episode for another day. Today, I want to talk about the next outlet for Greg Huffley to express himself. For those who don't know, at another attempt of selling out, I mean, in another try of getting Greg Huffley on the big screen, Disney has released a CGI Wimpy Kid movie based on the first book. Despite another movie I already did that, and was better, but whatever. And it came on Disney+, Plus and I saw it through unconventional means. And what do I think of it? Eh. So the plot is relatively pretty simple. It follows the events of the first book, as Greg is now going to middle school, and tries to be cool while also trying to make his best friend Rally more mature and cool and seem less like a kid. While the movie cuts a lot of things out of the book to fit a 56 minute run time, geez, not even an hour, it does keep some important plot points like the cheese touch and the stuff like Halloween. Through Greg's stupid little game that he and Rally plays, Rally ends up with a broken arm at, and from this point onwards, their friendship starts to drift away. As to not spoil the ending of this movie and the book and the 2010 live action movie, Greg and Rally become friends again by the end of the movie, and that was Diary of a Wimpy Kid. If this plot synopsis feels short, well that's because this movie cut a bunch of stuff out that was in the 2010 movie in the original book. Stuff that I will get into later. But now let's get into the animation. Let me say this right here. This movie is in CGI. The books are in 2D, and the character designs look like this. So you have a few ways you can look at this when modeling slash animating it. You can redesign the characters by adding or removing features so that way they can look better in a 3D space. You can go for a photorealistic art style to make them appear realistic and like they belong in the real world. Or you can try and model and animate them to be as faithful to the source material as possible while still being CGI. This movie goes with my third option, but the problem with this option is that you still need to go through a bit more effort to pull it off correctly. Now the models are good. I can commend the modeling team for trying to stick as close to the source material as they can, but the problem isn't with the models, no matter how weird Raleigh looks with his Play-Doh noodle hair. The problem is with the animation. When you're animating like this in CGI, you're going to need to keep the camera at a fixed angle, not moving it during scenes so that way the camera doesn't turn or face the character in front, because then Uncanny Valley strikes again. Now you could model them so that way they can look good in every angle, but this movie clearly didn't get a big enough budget for something like that. A example of this working well is with the Peanuts movie. The camera is always fixed, never moving in a scene, and when it does, the characters are made sure to look good. Technically speaking, both movies are modeled the same, except Wimpy Kid 2021 just loves to move its camera around in scenes and have us look at the characters from the front, despite them being drawn and modeled to be viewed from the side. The reason why the test demo that we saw when it was first announced back in December 2020 looked better is because the camera was at a fixed angle. You don't see Greg facing forward, we see him supposed to be viewed at the side. But the movie moves the camera around so much that Greg looks weird since he's not supposed to be viewed in the front. Also, it's made to just be me, but the backgrounds look a bit generic and the lighting could be better. Anyway, that's enough of the animation. Now let's talk about the pros. Like I said before, the models are really good, despite the camera really not doing wonders for them. I also really like the 2D intro at the beginning of the movie. They got a lot of things from the book down in the 2D part, and it just makes me wonder why they didn't animate it in 2D. So far, every time we see a 2D animated part in anything Wimpy Kid related, it looks great! So it always puzzles me why they chose live action for the first time, and then CGI for the second. I also like the sleepover scene with Craigley. The lighting actually looks good there. Craigley's character is supposed to be creepy and weird, and this scene fully shows off his weirdness. I particularly like how at the end of the scene, it will flash on and off to show how Greg had forgotten some parts of his night and remembered others. I generally think that that's really good. And like I said before, the models of the characters do look good. I do think that I would have had a problem seeing them in color, but it wasn't too distracting. Also, I like the change on Susan where you can see her eyes through her glasses since before you couldn't see them. Well, that's enough of the pros, now let's get into the cons. First things first, let's get the tiny complaints out of the way before we get into the big ones. Like I said before, the backgrounds look a bit generic. While this doesn't ruin the experience for me, it does show how this project seems a bit rushed. Another complaint is that Raleigh is kind of a jerk. In the original book, Greg makes the comic Zooey Mama, but doesn't think that a comic series with the same setup and punchline would be funny slash good. So he gives over the rights to Raleigh, which then he submits to the school paper and becomes famous. In the movie, Greg does the same thing again, except he doesn't give over the rights, he kind of still keeps it. Rally ends up stealing it and then becomes famous. Not only is this out of character for Rally, it just seems very rude of him to do it. However, Greg also has a personality change. 
In the book, Greg is a huge jerk, narcissist, probably a sociopath, and self-absorbed. I mean, the only reason why these books even exist is because Greg thinks that when he gets older and becomes famous, he can show people these journals so that he doesn't have to answer their stupid questions. But in the movie, he seems more kind. The only reason why he thinks Riley needs to grow up and be fixed is because Roderick put that in his head. Also, for some reason, uh, Real Roderick sounds younger than Greg, and he doesn't show up after that scene. In the books, Greg thought he needed to fix him and become, and turn him into another Greg. I'm talking about Rally, also. Um, I could chalk this up to, it's a reboot with new personalities, but this movie got so many other things faithful, like gags that were felt like they were lifted straight out of the book. So it puzzles me that they would make Greg nicer. Oh, that's probably a reason, okay. Now time for my big complaint. The movie's just too short. Now, I'm not one to complain about movie lengths. I mean, if Avengers Endgame were shorter than three hours, I might actually watch the trailer. But this movie is not only less than an hour long, but it also cuts tons of things out of the books for no reason. The school play stuff? Gone. The safety patrol? Gone. The wrestling stuff? Gone. The snow part? Gone. Despite the fact that we saw the snow stuff in the test footage. I see no reason to cut any of this stuff out. Like, why does the Halloween scene get to stay but not the safety patrol part? I know the Halloween scene establishes the bad guys that we'll see at the end of the movie, but I feel like safety patrol is way more important because it starts to rift in Greg and Rally's friendship. And with all this stuff cut out, it feels like the movie is just trying to get the movie over with without, instead of trying to tell an interesting story. My guess for why I like this is because the movie went through a lot of stuff from originally starting as a live-action adaptation to the book Cabin Fever, to then being switched to animation due to the long haul failing, to then being changed to a reboot of the first book due to 20th Century Fox being bought by Disney, to then the project being moved to Disney+, Plus, and I guess it started to make sense why this movie is so short. Doesn't mean I can't complain about it, though. So, overall, Diary of Wimpy Kid 2021 is an okay movie in my opinion. Since it's so short, it's not going to be wasting your time watching it. The animation is serviceable, and because it tries to stay safe, it's not terribly bad plot-wise. If you have Disney+, Plus, why not? But if you don't, j just go watch the original live-action one. That one is way better than this one, which is weird, because you think the animated version would be better than the live-action one, but no! It's announced that an animated version of Roger Rules is being worked on as we speak, so let's pray and hope that it'll be better than, the, than this one and be an improvement. Now, instead of watching this movie again, I'm going to go ahead and read the original book. And ew, why did they change the cover art? Why is it in CGI? Why doesn't Rally ever close his mouth?